everybody, welcome to week number three of Canceled. My name is Kyle Wassum. I'm the student pastor here at Bear Creek, and I'm so glad that you are catching week three of our Canceled series here on YouTube. Now, it is crazy to think that in a few days, it is going to be December. We just had Thanksgiving. I hope you had an amazing Thanksgiving break. You spent some amazing time with your family, maybe with some friends, ate some delicious food. But more importantly, I hope that you spent the week being thankful and grateful for everything that God has given you. I know I spent uh, this week really thankful for you in the creek, being here, getting to do life with you, getting to laugh and hang out and push you more towards Jesus is one of the greatest honors that I have in my life. And so I'm so thankful to be a part of the creek. I'm so thankful that you're a part of the creek. And I'm thankful that you tuned in uh, today to catch this third week of Canceled. So last week, Krista led us in week two, and she talked about this idea of loving people who are in need. If you look at the, the landscape of the planet, the landscape of the world, there are so many people that are in need not just physical need, but emotional need, and most importantly, spiritual need. And so we as believers, if you have a relationship with Jesus, you have the opportunity to meet those needs, to love people who are in need. You can do that right now as a teenager. In fact, that's one of the things that we talked about at Creek Weekend. So hopefully you are putting those things into practice even today. So I want you to be honest with me and answer the following question. I'm not gonna know whether you answer it or not, but I'm gonna answer it for myself and I'm just gonna assume that you're gonna answer it as well. Here's the question. Have you ever been envious before? I will easily raise my hand and say, absolutely. I remember back in uh, early middle school, beginning of high school, uh, I'm about to date myself significantly here, but that's okay. Uh, the Xbox had just come out. And so I was, I was, uh, repping the Nintendo 64, which was just some ridiculously high-tech graphics at the time. And so I'm on that playing Mario Kart and, and all of these other games that I loved. And then one of my really good friends got an Xbox. And the jump from the Nintendo 64 to the Xbox in terms of graphics and quality and all of that was mind-blowing. I mean, on the N64, people look like blobs. In Xbox world, on those games, you could actually kind of make out some of the features that made them human beings in the game. So huge step up. And what happened? I saw that my friend got this Xbox and what, what, what happened? I was jealous of him. I was envious of him. I wanted that Xbox. And so I concocted this amazingly elaborate, ornate plan with my parents and kind of had a presentation to them and say, hey, if we get an Xbox for the family, this is going to be an entertainment center for all of us, for my little sister, for my parents. Now, somehow I tricked, you could say convinced, my parents to get us an Xbox. I remember standing in line, holding it tightly at Walmart when we finally got it. You wanna take a guess at who used that Xbox primarily? My sister, exactly, no, it was me. I was the one who used it. My parents and family hardly ever used it, okay? But I was jealous, I was envious, and then when I finally got it, it didn't satisfy me, right? Like, video game systems are great, they're cool, but they're not meant to satisfy us. And so this week, for Canceled Part 3, what we wanna talk about is the fact that Jesus calls us to love others that we envy. In fact, like, we should work really, really hard to eliminate envy, because what I'm gonna show you from God's Word today is that envy really does more harm than it does any good, okay? So all of us have been envious at some point in our lives. For me, it was the Xbox. Uh, for you, it may be something else. And my envy turned into some jealousy. Like, oh man, I, I really wish that I had this. And every time I would see my friend, I would wanna be at my friend's house to be able to play the Xbox. And it just, it got really unhealthy. It was ridiculous looking back at the, the situation from, from this perspective. It was really ridiculous. But that's where I was because I thought that this Xbox would really just make me super happy. It didn't, okay? So what about you? Has there maybe been a friend or a classmate, maybe a teammate, maybe someone in a club at school or in the band that got something that you wanted or received an accolade that you thought that you should have and it just sent you into a, into a spiral? 
because you are so fixated on that thing instead of the other blessings, the other gifts, the other things that God has given to you? I don't know. Maybe this is hitting really close to home for you. But all of us have experienced jealousy at some point or another. And, and there's, there's some people that, that think with envy and with jealousy, oh, it's not that big of a deal, right? Like, it's not going to hurt anything. Well, if you can imagine, let's imagine that I had a gigantic pitcher of water right here, right? Which I obviously don't. Maybe we can, you know, superimpose it with editing and video, cool tech stuff that I'm not amazing enough to do. But let's just pretend, for example's sake, that we have a pitcher of water, okay? And then I take one little, I have a little packet of green food coloring, okay? So this is what envy does. So as I am envious, just imagine me pouring in one little drop, right? One little drop into an entire pitcher of water doesn't seem like a lot, right? Like the water still, you can you can see the entirety of the water. It doesn't seem like a lot. The food coloring will probably uh, disappear. You won't even really know it's there. But as I continue to be jealous, as I continue to be envious, I keep putting more drops and more drops and more drops until eventually something that started really, really small becomes something huge and it overtakes everything. By the end, that entire pitcher of water, which used to be clear water, will now become hazy green. And it will, it will be disgusting. Nobody wants that. So we can't think, we can't believe that envy and jealousy doesn't hurt us because it does. It starts small, ends really big, and it destroys. To be perfectly honest, it destroys. So let's look at scripture, right? Kyle's words, not important. God's words, the timeless truths found in his word. That's what we care about today. That's what we really want to learn. So Proverbs 27, 4. This is what scripture says. I'm going to read it. It says, wrath is cruel. Anger is overwhelming. But who can stand before jealousy? Hmm. So think about the last time that you were absolutely furious with somebody, right? Like eventually that anger dissipated. Okay. Hopefully if it, if it hasn't yet, then, you know, send me a text message and we can talk. But anger dissipates, right? It fades away over time. Jealousy, though, it's something that starts and it continues to build and build and build until eventually, like I said earlier with my water example, it can completely overtake everything and destroy us. And we don't want that. So who can stand before jealousy? Not good at all. Then let's flip to 1 Samuel chapter 18. We've got this story in Scripture of what happens Practically speaking, realistically, what happens when someone lets jealousy and envy overtake them, okay? 1 Samuel 18, I'm just going to read a couple of verses in chapter 18 and a couple of verses in chapter 19 and kind of summarize the gist of this story. It's a crazy one. 1 Samuel 18, starting in verse 6, it says, As they were coming home, when David returned from stri striking down the Philistine, which was obviously Goliath, the women came out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with songs of joy, and with musical instruments. And the women sang to one another as they celebrated, Saul has struck down his thousands and David his ten thousands. We'll get to that in just a second. And Saul was very angry and this saying displeased him. He said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands and to me they have ascribed thousands. And what more can he have but the kingdom? And Saul eyed David from that day on. The next day, a harmful spirit from God rushed upon Saul, and he raved within his house while David was playing the lyre, as he did day by day. Saul had his spear in his hand. So what happens, okay? David and Saul go out on this military campaign. Uh, the Lord gives them great success. And then kind of as so often is the case, like when a sports team wins a, wins a championship, what do they throw? a parade, a celebration, right? So if you can imagine in biblical times, there's kind of this big parade, big celebration in Israel. Scripture says the people are singing, dancing, playing music. It's a big, huge thing, all because of the victories. And so scripture says that one of the songs that was sung is that Saul has struck down his thousands and David his ten thousands. So what happens? Immediately, King Saul hears these words and what happens? He gets jealous, envious, angry. Why? How dare the people give David credit, 10 times as much credit for his part in the military campaign as they do to the king over everybody? 
And so what happens? Saul immediately gets angry, displeased, that says a harmful spirit from God rushed upon him. So he gets overtaken by this envy, overtaken by this jealousy. And then did you catch the very last sentence that I read? Saul had his spear in his hand. What do you think that means? Well, let me tell you. It means that Saul was plotting and planning to take out David. His envy, his jealousy had blown up and gotten so big that he wanted to take out another human being. Remember how I said that sometimes we think that envy and jealousy aren't that big of a deal? They start small, but then they can explode. And that's exactly what happened with King Saul. Now, fast forward one chapter over to chapter 19. And we see that Saul actually tries to put into practice and and, and enact his plan, okay? So David has killed Goliath. He's brought a whole lot of fame and prestige to Israel. And then eventually what happens? King Saul gets envious and jealous and angry. And that causes him, that moves him to try and commit a really heinous sin. Check out what 1 Samuel 19, I'm going to just kind of skip around. I'm going to give you the gist. So Saul, and it says, and Saul spoke to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants that they should kill David. So now this isn't just a Saul thing. This is a, hey, he's trying to round up support with a bunch of people, okay? But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, Saul, my father seeks to kill you. Therefore, be on your guard in the morning. Stay in a secret place and hide yourself. So basically, Jonathan, Saul's son, is best friends with David, finds out that his dad is planning to kill and murder his best friend, David. So he warns David. Did you catch that? There's a lot going on here. Jonathan warns his best friend, David, that Saul, his father, is going to try and kill him. So he says, hey, hide yourself in a secret place. I'm going to go out, verse 3, and stand beside my father in the field where you are, and I'll speak to my father about you. And if I learn anything, I'll tell you. So Jonathan tries to go and kind of be a little bit of a spy with his father. Like, let me see what my dad is thinking about this. Was he just rushing to judgment because he was super angry and embarrassed and jealous and envious? Or is there something to this plot? Like, is he really going to try and take out my best friend? So what happens? Verse four, Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father, and said to him, let not the king sin against his servant David because he's not sinned against you and because his deeds have brought good to you. And then he A couple of verses later, at the end of verse 6, it says, Saul listened to the voice of Jonathan. Saul swore, as the Lord lives, he shall not be put to death. So whether it was just a temporary thing or in that moment, Saul legitimately thought, I'm not going to murder this kid. I'm going to keep him alive. He swears to his son, Jonathan, as surely as the Lord lives, I'm not going to kill him. So Jonathan calls David. He reports to him all these things. Jonathan brings, goes so far as to bring David to Saul, and he was in his presence. So it seems like things get kind of back to normal, as it were. Not so, not so fast, okay? Verse 8, and there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines and struck them with a great blow so that they fled before him. Then a harmful spirit from the Lord came upon Saul. Does this sound familiar to you? It should. And as he sat in his house with a spear in his hand, he still has that spear. And David was playing the lyre. And Saul sought to pin David to the wall with a spear, but he eluded Saul so that he struck the spear into the wall and David fled and escaped that night. So then eventually Saul sends messengers to David's house to watch him, to spy on him, so that he would be killed in the morning. But David's wife tells him, hey, you need to leave. You need to leave. So eventually what happens? David escapes. So... What, what do we learn from this? Well, eventually, here's what's crazy. During this time, David had the opportunity to kill Saul multiple times. Not just one time or two. Like he had multiple time, multiple opportunities to kill Saul, to take away the person that was threatening his life. But David said, you know what? I'm not going to do that because God has put Saul into a position of leadership. He's the king. I'm not doing that, okay? And yet, what is Saul still trying to do? He's still trying to take out David. 
So, so much so that in the passage that I just read, Saul tries to murder David with a spear. David escapes. Uh, it's just this huge ordeal, right, that just started because of a simple little song. David has killed 10,000s and Saul has only killed thousands, okay? That's what envy and jealousy does. It starts small and grows and grows and grows and grows and grows until eventually it can cause us to do things we have no business whatsoever doing, okay? Now, here's the sad reality. Not every story in scripture ends with restoration, with forgiveness, with everything working out perfectly, okay? This is a very ugly piece of Saul's story. But it doesn't have to be an ugly piece to your story, okay? If you are struggling with envy or jealousy right now in this moment as you're watching this, and that may be very easy to do because we're anticipating Christmas coming up and people flood social media with the presents that they got and the gifts that they received. And it can be very easy to look at those things and go, I didn't get that. I want that. I want what they have. And then what happens? Envy and jealousy creep in and then they can grow and grow and grow. Now, let's, let's look at one more passage of scripture, okay? One more passage of scripture, Matthew chapter 22, starting in verse 36. Here's what scripture says as we conclude canceled part three. Jesus is having a conversation with a lawyer, a Pharisee. And he says, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he being Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So students, as, as we conclude today, we wrap up this third part of canceled and look ahead to part four and the conclusion of this series. And then we'll head into a Christmas themed two week series that we have planned for you. It's gonna be really good. I, I hope that you remember that God has not called us to be envious or jealous of others. He has called us to love them, okay? So much so that Jesus commands it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Saul was really quick to get envious and jealous of King David over a simple little song. So what is it today as you're watching this? What is it in your life that maybe you're struggling with being envious or jealous of somebody else? I would challenge you, as soon as you finish, as soon as this video ends, close your computer or turn off your phone or your tablet or whatever, wherever you're watching this and spend some time in prayer and just ask God, to change your heart, change your heart. God, help me not to be jealous, help me not to be envious. Because here's the reality, we can be like David. We can be very virtuous and, uh, and doing the right thing, but we feel like people are out to get us. Maybe we're like Saul, and, and a lot of us have been. I've, I have been like Saul before, where I've been envious and jealous of people. Or maybe the truth of the matter is we're kind of like both. So regardless of where you find yourself today, practically as we end, let's talk about this. How do you stop being envious? I'm gonna give you a couple of suggestions. Number one, think about, and this should be pretty easy because we just finished Thanksgiving, think about the things that God has blessed you with. And the reality is there's a lot of them, okay? If you will stop and just write them down, it will take you quite some time. The second thing, when you're tempted to be envious, when you're tempted to be jealous, take those thoughts, take those eyes and put them directly on Jesus because you're gonna find peace. You're gonna find fulfillment. You're gonna find joy in him, not in those things or in those trophies or accomplishments or accolades. Those things are temporary. The joy, the peace, the fulfillment that Jesus offers is eternal. And so I hope that we would be a people, as a Creek student ministry family, that we would be a people who love those that we envy and that when we're tempted to envy, when we're tempted to be jealous, help, uh, that we would ask God to help us take our eyes and fix them on him and not on those things. Let me pray for us. King Jesus, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the student or adult, or whoever is watching this, this message today, God, I pray that they would take this story from 1 Samuel, that they would take your words 
in Matthew and in, in Proverbs, everything that we looked at today, God, I pray that we would not be envious, jealous people because we know that envy and jealousy destroy, just like it destroyed King Saul and drove him to ultimately try and take someone's life. God, so help us to take it seriously when we feel envy and jealousy coming on. Help us to turn our eyes to you and you alone. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Students, I love you. I'm thankful for you. December's gonna be awesome. I'll see you soon.